Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Nevin, and I'm a developer relations engineer at Google, supporting Android media features and APIs. I'm excited to talk to you all today about the Transformer module in our Jetpack Media 3 library. So we'll start with a quick overview of Media 3 to make sure we're all on the same page. Then we'll dive specifically into the APIs offered by Transformer and see a bunch of examples of how to use them. Lastly, I'll describe how you could incrementally start including Transformer in your app without needing to replace your entire editing pipeline. So what is the Jetpack Media 3 library? Jetpack Media 3 is your one-stop shop for APIs about media playback and editing use cases. Version 1.0 of Media 3 released early last year, and we're already seeing that it's being used in more than 30% of the top 1,000 apps in the Play Store. I imagine many of you are already familiar with ExoPlayer for playback, which is now a part of Media 3 instead of being a standalone library. Speaking of which, if you haven't yet, please check out our docs on migrating to Media 3, as updates to ExoPlayer will only come to Media 3 going forwards. Today, however, I'd like to focus on the relatively new Transformer module, which includes APIs specifically for media editing. Social media and video are becoming increasingly important, but we've heard from app developers that building media editing features on Android has historically been difficult especially when it comes to ensuring good performance and reliability across a huge variety of devices. To address this, we're investing in support libraries that offer improved quality and new capabilities for media editing to empower you to build cool experiences for your users. We're focused on three main goals with Transformer. First, editing should be easy. We want to enable you to be more efficient as you write your code, saving you time and money. We handle the complexity of low-level APIs and make it easier for you to maintain your app. Transformer is built with performance and quality in mind, including device-specific optimizations. Our code is thoroughly and regularly tested for high throughput. Of course, we also expect Transformer to be reliable. Transformer supports API level 21 and onwards, so you can reach 99% of active devices. We also test on a wide range of devices to catch chipset-specific bugs and framework issues and implement workarounds for them. Media3 supports a range of content creation use cases with full interoperability between Transformer and ExoPlayer. Our ethos also includes easy customizability, so, among other capabilities, you can create custom audio and video effects, control codec configuration and fallback behavior, set a custom muxer for writing media containers, and we're working on continuously expanding the APIs you can use to build compositions. OK, that's enough preamble. Let's dive into some actual examples of how to use Transformer. Starting off simple, here's how to transcode video files from one format to another. First, we'll create a Transformer instance. This will be your entry point into most operations with Transformer. This is also where we can set the desired output MIME types. We can also attach a listener to the Transformer object that will be notified for completion or error cases. And finally, we simply start the transformation by supplying it with an edited media item as the input and a path for the output file. Transformer includes a host of video effects that you can use directly out of the box. For this example, let's define a video effect that will flip the video horizontally and rotate it 180 degrees. The effects item then collects a list of the audio processors and video effects that we'll want to apply. Of course, for this example, we don't have any audio processors and we've added the video effect that we just defined. Finally, we configure an edited media item using our input media item and the effects we want to apply to it. Here's what we end up with. As another basic example, with Transformer, you can run trim operations on media items. Trimming can be applied directly to a media item 
with a clipping configuration where you can set a start and end position. Then we create an edited media item and transformer instance like before. Transformer can help reduce the latency of a trimming operation in some cases by enabling trim optimization. This speeds up the export by decoding and re-encoding as little of the video as possible, then stitching the re-encoded data along with the rest of the original video. Transformer can also be used to create videos out of images. To work with an image, we start by simply creating a media item with an image URI. When creating the corresponding edited media item, make sure to define the duration and frame rate of the video asset that will be created out of the image. You can then use this edited media item as usual to apply effects, like the example shown here. Now for one last example of operations Transformer supports out of the box, let's see another popular use case, applying text or bitmap overlays to a video. Here, I'll show you an example of a text overlay. To construct the overlay, we start by defining our text as a spannable string, which allows us to configure its appearance. Then, we create a text overlay with the spannable string. And finally, we collect the overlays we want to add into a list. Now, we can use the overlays we defined to create an overlay effect and apply it to our edited media item. And just like that, we have a video with an overlay. But what if we want to do something fancier than the inbuilt effects allow? Here, we create a custom effect by subclassing the inbuilt matrix transformation to zoom in for the first second of playback. The rest of our code remains exactly the same, and we get the output you see here. For advanced custom effects, you can implement a custom base GL shader program. The key method to take note of here is draw frame, where you can process each individual frame. We actually use this to define some of the effects in Transformer as well. So check out the source code for overlay shader program or color LUT shader program in the Media3 GitHub repository to see some examples of what you can do in the draw frame method. For even more advanced custom effects, you can implement a custom GL shader program. The key method to take note of here is Q input frame. GL shader program allows you to create custom effects that combine multiple inputs. Then we define our video effect with a GL effect that uses our custom shader program. The example you see here is from our transformer demo app and uses a media pipe frame processor for face detection in conjunction with other built-in effects like trimming. All right, so far we've only been dealing with a single media item. But for the next set of examples, let's take a look at how we can combine several media items. The pattern we've used so far is to create an edited media item built from our input media item and the effects we want to apply to it. To create a composition, first, we group edited media items into edited media item sequences. A composition is then composed of one or two edited media item sequences the current version is restricted to having one sequence that can contain a mix of video and image items, plus one sequence that contains a background audio track alongside it. Future updates to Transformer will enable compositions to have more than two sequences with arbitrary media items. And here it all is in code. I've defined three edited media items, a video and an image that will join so that the image plays right after the video and an audio item that we'll use for the background audio. As described before, first we create sequences with our input edited media items, and then we add the sequences to a composition. I've set the sequence with the background audio to loop so that it lasts the full duration of the main sequence. In addition to applying effects directly to edited media items, you can also apply inbuilt presentation effects on entire compositions. Presentation effects control how a frame is presented, such as setting the output resolution or changing how input pixels map onto the output frame geometry. 
As an example of operations that are applied to entire compositions, let's take a look at how Transformer can also help you handle special formats. With more and more devices supporting HDR video capture by default, you might need a way to tone map HDR content down to an SDR color space. Here, you can see that we set the HDR mode for the composition to tone map from HDR to SDR using OpenGL. This is also where you could call set effects to apply a presentation effect to the entire composition. The Media3 editing libraries provide HDR support to ensure Android apps and partners can seamlessly integrate with HDR. On API levels 33 and up, Transformer's default behavior is to retain HDR data when possible or fall back to OpenGL tone mapping when not. If you need to allow HDR videos to be displayed and edited in SDR across a wider range of Android devices that may not have hardware HDR support, you can tone map HDR content down to SDR. For input media files in an HDR format, you can tone map to SDR by tone mapping using OpenGL. This is the example we saw in the previous code snippet, which is supported on API levels 29 and up. If OpenGL tone mapping is not supported, Transformer will throw an export exception. Alternatively, you can use the framework media codec for this operation but this option is only supported from API levels 31 and up. Finally, we have added support for Ultra HDR images in the Media3 1.4.0 release. As I mentioned before, ExoPlayer and Transformer are engineered to work hand in hand. So next, I'd like to show you how you can use ExoPlayer to preview the effects you plan to apply with Transformer. This code demonstrates a basic initialization of an ExoPlayer instance, except that we've also included a call to set video effects using the same effect that we would have applied to an edited media item or composition. Note that there are some limitations to this. For example, it doesn't work with DRM protected content and set video effects needs to be called before calling prepare. For more examples, including showcases of developers already using Transformer in their app and seeing significant improvements in performance and reliability, I highly recommend checking out our talk from Google I.O. earlier this year. As the last big topic I'll cover today, I'd like to briefly introduce the idea of using Transformer solely for the encoding and export part of the media processing pipeline. This way, you could incrementally try adopting new Transformer capabilities and gradually take advantage of the benefits that Media3 offers rather than having to undertake a huge migration project. An export operation consists of three stages, loading the media, modifying it as desired, and then outputting the result. Transformer uses the concept of an asset loader to handle the loading media step. This is responsible for fetching the media whether local or remote, and decoding it if needed. Transformer uses ExoPlayer for this by default, so you can get the benefit of its support for a wide range of formats. Or you can write a custom asset loader. For applying effects, the media flows into separate pipelines for audio and video processing. As we saw in some of the previous examples, you pass in separate lists of video effects and audio processors, which are applied in the given order. Finally, a muxer takes the encoded audio and video samples and writes them to produce MP4 files. Currently, Transformer uses the framework media muxer, but we're working on an alternative muxer implementation as part of Transformer, similar to how ExoPlayer has bundled extractors for reading media files. The video pipeline expects to receive video decoder output via a surface texture, bitmap, or OpenGL texture and passes input frames into video effects as OpenGL textures. The audio pipeline expects byte buffers that contain PCM audio samples, which are passed to the provided audio processors. I've really only scratched the surface in terms of exactly how Transformer handles exports, but what this means is that if your app already has video rendering code in OpenGL, you can plug your existing media pipeline into Transformer's pipeline described here and benefit from Media3's functionality for encoding, muxing, and applying any additional effects. 
The class that handles this is named Texture Asset Loader. If this use case sounds interesting to you, please reach out to us so we can collaborate on your implementation. I also recommend checking out the GitHub repositories for our sample apps. We have Platform Samples app on the left and Socialite on the right. Socialite in particular might be interesting since it demonstrates Transformer in action in the context of a social media app. Phew, that was a lot we covered, but hopefully this talk was inspiring. I'm looking forward to seeing the delightful Android media experiences you create. Thanks again for your time. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Mm -hmm.